So welcome to this uh, first Ask an Expert session. What I've done is I've gone to the, the bottom of the relevant step and I've ranked the, um, the responses, the questions by likes. And there were three clearly top liked questions. So I'm going to answer them today in three separate short videos. The first one was a very interesting question from Bart Vouters. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. He asked, uh, what are the similarities and differences between supercomputing as we are learning in this course and high performance computing in the cloud or in data centers. So I think the most important thing here is, is, is to get across, there are two very different styles of computing, uh, computational science, both of which need a large amount of computer time, but have very different parameters. One is high performance computing, which we're studying in this course. And the idea there is to think about something like uh, weather forecasting, where you have hundreds, thousands of CPU cores working on the same problem at the same time and communicating each with each other a lot. And there we need a dedicated supercomputer like we've described in these in these um, in this course with very, very high performance networking to connect them together. Otherwise, you know, this communication will just they'll spend all their time communicating and not enough time calculating. The other side of things is typically called high throughput computing. And this is where you still have an enormous amount of calculation to do, but it can be broken down to lots and lots of individual jobs which don't need to communicate with each other. And so there's a large number of effectively serial jobs, which you can send out one at a time uh, to get processed and then bring them back together. So you have a central point of control uh, where you maybe have your data and then you send out lots and lots of jobs which you want to be done and then they come back. And, and that kind of calculation, high throughput computing could be run on a supercomputer, but it would be a waste of money because you've invested all this this, this money um, in, in the interconnect. And here you don't really care about the interconnect performance. You're sending one job off, it's running for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes an hour and coming back with the answers. And so other than perhaps the IO, which will maybe come to later, uh, a supercomputer isn't could, could run these jobs, but it's not cost effective. That's where the cloud comes in. Um, we've had, you know, um, companies like Google and Amazon have bought these enormous um, computing resources, which are all over the world, all different kinds of computers, which they use for their own purposes. But people realize, well, they realize that they could sell cycles on these machines t to users. And they're really, really good for this kind of high throughput computing kind of job, where you basically, you can send out lots of jobs, the cloud will, will run them it, anywhere. You don't really care where they run, it will just run them on, on available resources. Because hope because you're not really network limited, it doesn't matter if you if you run a job in you submit the job in your laptop. I'm here in Edinburgh. It could run on a machine in, in the USA or, or somewhere in, um, in in Asia. I don't really care as long as I get the result back. And so and the uh, the other point about cloud computing is it's very much um, focused on resilience. We we've talked a bit about it may surprise you that supercomputers aren't particularly resilient in the sense that you have one. Um, high performance computing job, what I would call the tightly coupled job, a job where the CPU cores are talking to each other very rapidly. If one of those CPU cores on nodes fails, then the job just collapses in a heap. And there's very little you can do there because, go back to, to weather forecasting, if, if I'm a CPU core, I'm responsible for a, a region of, of, of the globe where I'm doing the weather forecast. If, if, if the CPU core dies or falls over, or the node falls over, the data will go, the data's in RAM, it disappears, and, and, and there's nothing I can do really. Um, however, in this high throughput computing model where you have a central um, uh, point of control, if a job fails, you just say, well, you submit that job to somebody else. So the cloud is much is designed for resilience because you're using a large number of computers, or all kinds of architectures all over the world. One of the fundamental design features is coping for the fact that, that often the, these um, these nodes, the, these machines are going to fail. However, you can even send out the job more than once, send it out twice, and just when the first one comes back, take that as the answer and move on to the next one. So I think that the difference between the cloud and high performance computing is really um, the applications they have and they fit towards jobs which I would classify as tightly coupled high performance computing jobs or more loosely coupled jobs, jobs where the, the individual tasks are independent from each other and that's typically called high throughput computing. And, and an individual data center, what we would call it, well, nowadays data centers have become quite a general term. I would say that Archer, our computer and other computers are housed in a, in, a, in a machine room, which you would sort of call a data center. But if you didn't do high performance computing, the typical machines you'd have in data center would be, would be, um, would be there to run a large number of, of serial jobs very rapidly. And the nice thing about the cloud is if you're a user, 
well, if you use a supercomputer, you commit to it for a long term. You apply for an account, you get an account, probably for several years, and you want to run jobs all the time. You want to keep running big jobs. And what happens if you're a user who's sitting on your laptop and every now and again, once a year, every six months, you suddenly realize you have to do an enormous calculation. You don't want to buy a supercomputer or buy into all the infrastructure of a supercomputer. You can just buy time in the cloud, just give it your credit card and, and, and throw off all these jobs and for a small period of time, have access to a huge amount of computing resources. And that's how the, 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 the economics works, that these companies, Amazon, Google, have so many resources that one user doing a big job to them, if they can accommodate that. That's really quite a small small delta on, the, on their baseline load. The other thing about cloud computing is um, moving data around is very, very uh, expensive, very, very slow. And so what cloud computing can do is, you know, what it will try and do is if you run a job somewhere and your data is there, the next job it will try and move the job to the data. And again, data is typically replicated in the cloud for two reasons. One is for resilience, so if some of the disks fail, you still have the data, but also to give more opportunities to say, well, you know, if my data is in more than one place, I can run my jobs in more than one place. So there's a lot more resilience um, in, in cloud computing, but it is a very, very different model. But it's a very interesting question. And, and cloud computing providers are moving towards providing some element of high performance computing, smaller systems, but they are starting to provide systems with maybe a few hundred cores available to you. But, but the very large systems, hundreds of thousands, millions of cores, are still very much the domain of supercomputing.